and welcome to Day to Day with Ray, with me, Ray Ray. Um, so today, even though it's not Template Tuesday, it's Wednesday, I'm still going to go ahead and make it make this for Template Tuesday since I didn't get a chance to yesterday. Um, today, I'm jumping on board with the whole Pokemon phenomenon. This is my favorite Pokemon, is Jigglypuff. And... In all reality, what I wanted to do was I wanted to make a ball cake. I wanted to make a, a circular cake with my ball pan. And I was going to make my little Jigglypuff. But I could still maybe do that or I could do another circular thing one day in the future. I have a lot of stuff planned for Halloween for the whole month of October. So, um, but yeah, like... I really didn't have anything planned and I wanted to, you know, like I'm we're still so excited to having like a hundred subscribers. So I want to, you know, keep things rolling here. So I'm just going to get right into it. Um, so here's my template for Jigglypuff. And um, I actually, I'm going to do a little bit of experimenting. Um, I made this chocolate fondant and you added uh, candy melts to it. And I was like, okay, you know. And uh, so right here, this is actually modeling chocolate with uh, candy melts and corn syrup. I have actually finally mastered on how to make this stuff. But as you see, this pink is too daggone bright for Jiggly. So what I'm actually going to do is I have some white marshmallow fondant. And this could be a disaster. So I'm actually just going to take half of the modeling chocolate and put that off to the side. And I'm going to mix these two together and see if it's, you know, something decent to work with or what. Because, um, I, cause I, you know, it was thinking because my girlfriend, she, I made the chocolate fondant for her cake and she loved it. it she said it tastes just like a Tootsie Roll. And um, she really did like it. So I'm thinking, well, what if big what if um if I made it like a white chocolate fondant like marshmallow fondant and instead of putting um the uh you know instead of making like a chocolate fondant I can make a white a white chocolate fondant with the marshmallows so we have a lot of grease going on here oils from the chocolate I don't know if that's good or bad, but we'll see. I don't know. I'm not really liking the consistency that it's become. Again, this is all experimental. Um, I just wanted to see what would happen. Maybe I shouldn't have put so much in. It's mixing in. I don't know if maybe the fondant, because the fondant was still a little warm. I did put it in the uh, microwave because it was a little stiff. I don't know, it's kind of coming together. Maybe if I, so here's what we got so far. Still a little bit of streaking, so I'm still gonna work it. I don't know, it seems okay. The oil seem to be going down. It's a really nice, pliable, it's got some good, it's got some good stretch to it. I don't know, we'll see. So I'm actually going to, well, actually, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to taste this. I'm going to see if it how it tastes. Okay. That tastes really good. It tastes like a really good buttercream. I don't know. That's kind of good. All right. So I'm going to be right back. I am going to cut out my template and start cutting things out. So I will be right back. Oh my goodness, why you gotta text me every time I do this? Oh my goodness. Okay, so I got Jigglypuff all cut out. And what I did was I actually found a cookie cutter that is actually about the same exact size as Jigglypuff. It's just a hair smaller, but that's okay because we can add all these extra parts on afterwards. So I am going to roll out my modeling chocolate slash fondant mixture. So I'm gonna start rolling this out right now. 
Oh, is this one here? Let me back you up a little bit. Hopefully you can see. There we go. All right, so I'm going to start rolling this out. I don't know. I don't want it too, too thick, but I do want a good thickness to it. Like I said, you can use this for um, a cake topper. If you um, want to make a smaller version of it, these would be good for cupcakes. You know, a small cake, a big cake, you know, just adjust the size on your uh, computer. Of course, you can do an edible image. Also, I have a hard time rolling thin, I ain't even going to lie, and rolling even. I try really hard to roll even layers, but like anytime you stop, you always get this ridges, or I always get this ridge. So I don't know if anybody has any tips or tricks about that. Feel free to, I did it again. Okay, so this is a pretty good thickness. I'm going to lift it up. Okay. And I'm going to take my cookie cutter, and I'm going to cut right here. Okay. So there, we got Jiggly's body. And I'm actually just going to use a, my little knife. Oh, maybe I shouldn't use my knife. Let me use, let me get you out. Let me get this out. See, I'm like kind of messing it up. I just want to make sure it wasn't sticking. Maybe this little mixture wasn't the best to use, but that's okay. Let me get it all shaped again. Okay. All right, so we got the body. I'm going to set that off to the side. Now, I'm going to take Jiggly Puffs, this little hair piece up here. Wait a minute. Let me set this back down. See this little hair piece right here? All right, I'm going to cut this piece out. Cut it out. Okay. Just like that. Okay. So this is Jiggly's little hair piece. So I'm just going to lay it down on my little mixture I got going on here. And I'm going to take my knife and I'm just going to cut. Try to keep it as perfect as I can with the size. Let me come this way. Sorry if my hand's in the way. Okay. Now, I'm going to make a little indent while the paper is up here. Because that's where I know there's like a little curve right there. So I'm going to take my paper off. And it did stick a little and that's okay. Because I can smooth this out. Oh yeah, look at that. It smoothed out really well. And then I'm going to put my jiggly puff on top of here. So I get an idea. I don't know how well you can see this. Come here. So I'm going to lay this, this is my Jigglypuff, right here. So that's where I know that piece has to go. Sorry if you can't really say. So that's where that piece is going to be. And I'm just going to kind of press it. And then again, this is where the little dip is so I'm gonna make like a little uh, indentation because that's where her little hair piece is and just kind of shape it up a little bit all right so we have that piece so now I'm going to cut out her little feet and I'll be right back 
Alright, so now I have her little teeny tiny feet cut out. Now, this foot is actually this one right here. Her little hand was in front of it, so it's going to have like a curve, but you don't have to cut that just so long as you know where it goes on the template. So I'm going to put this down on top of here. And, and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a little longer. The back piece, I'm sorry if you can't see, my apologies. And I'm going to lift this paper up. And the reason why I'm making it longer is so that way it can attach underneath of Jigglypuff. So as you can see, I made it longer. I'm actually going to trim her up a little bit more. Trim this up. And then we'll trim this up a little bit. Because you want to try to keep it true to size. Okay. And now I'm just going to like round it out some. The way it should look. Okay. I'm going to do the other foot and then I'm going to put them on. I'll be right back. Okay, so I now have both of the feet cut out. So once again, I'm going to put my Jigglypuff back on here. And I know that this foot goes right here because the foot, the um, arm goes over it. So I'm just going to do that. And then we'll kind of smush them together a little bit and then this foot was right here and I remember that so I'm gonna lift this up and if you don't remember how long they are you can always put the template back down and move them around so that looks good so we got Jigglypuff's feet on let me just double check with this one Okay, this one was more like this. Okay. That's how her little foot was. Okay, so we got her feet. Now it's time to make her little hands, which I'm going to cut out again real quick. I'm going to cut out from the modeling chocolate slash fondant mixture. And I'm going to place them on. So I will, again, be right back in a second. All right, so now I'm cutting out Jiggly's arms real quick. Now, she's got two different arms. The arm that I'm cutting out right now is the one that goes over the leg. So I'm just cutting this out. All right, I can just take this off. Okay. Now this arm, as you see when I cut it out of the Jigglypuff, I'm going to just once again take the straight edge and I'm going to put this back on here. Put this back over top of Jiggly. And this arm was right here. So there's where her one arm was because remember it was over top of the leg. So you can kind of smooth it and shape it. This modeling chocolate fondant mix is really nice. I'm not even going to lie. So I kind of left a little um, bit of a inkling where my other arm goes. If you can see on here, there's like a little space of where there's no black. That's where the other arm was. So I'm going to cut this arm out. like this and this is just a simple this is pretty easy to do and I actually need to make this one a little longer I forgot to do that but that's okay I'm just gonna shape it make sure all the edges oh it's getting dark it's getting ready to storm and then I'm going to put, once again, I'm going to put my template on here. 
And then I'm going to look for this little break, which is right here. And I'm just going to lift up and I'm going to slide this arm right under here. Just like that. This fondant and modeling chocolate mixture is actually really good. Not only does it taste great, but it's very easy to smooth out. If it was just regular, because, you know, chocolate's pretty easy to smooth out and stuff. And um, I think I'm getting a much cleaner, other than the fingerprints and stuff, which, I mean, you can't really help sometimes with chocolate. But I think it's doing pretty well. Okay. So... We have, I don't know how well you can see this. Okay, so this is what we have so far. We have the hair piece, the two arms, and the two legs. As you see, the template fits right on top. Everything fits pretty much in place. You know, it's not going to be maybe 100% perfect, but it'll be perfect enough. You know, so there's the feet and everything. So next, we're going to cut out the ears. And we're going to cut along this line. But you're going to make it a little bit um, longer. So that way it will slide up under the piece. And then I have um, a purple font. It's kind of a gray. But I think we'll just do a purple. Because I don't really have any gray. Um, but I can put like a black on... Um, powdered food coloring on it and um and then we're gonna work on the eyes okay so I just cut my ears out and what I did was um I did cut them bigger but if you see I, how thin this bottom part is this is the part that's gonna slide under the jigglypuff so if you need help with that I just put the little piece of paper on top and then I'm gonna lift her up and then I'm just going to slide this under with the piece of paper on top so that way you can size it up, match it up, and then you're good to go. And then just fuse them together. Let me see if I can bring this up closer so you can see what I'm doing. Hmm. Okay. Hold on one second. Hopefully this is a better angle where you can see. So I, again, I have, whoops, I have my cutout from the modeling chocolate fondant mixture that I've, I've created like a mad scientist. And I'm just going to put my piece on top. And you see how much extra that is? You can flatten it out. You can keep, you know, you can shape up your piece. And then if you can't remember how far it goes, again, just use this. Just like that, tuck that in, make sure your ear is equal, it looks good, lift your piece up, press it down, shape it out, you're good to go. How about that? So here's what we have so far. I think Jigglypuff is coming together quite nicely. I really do like this fixture, I'm glad, or this mixture, I mean to say. It is actually pretty awesome. It tastes great, and it's really easy to work with. So I think for now on, when I make my fondant, I'm going to mix fondant and modeling chocolate together. Okay, so as we're moving along, all we really have to do is the eyes. So what I'm actually doing here is I'm putting the template over top and I'm just going to mark because we need to know where the eyes are going to go. Let me, okay, here we go. I need to mark the mouth. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually, I was going to use that, but I think I'm going to use the knife is I'm just going to mark the mouth. Take my time. Okay. Let's lift that up. Okay. Now see where the mouth is, so I'm just going to take my knife and very slowly make my mark. And there we go. Okay, so we got the mouth. So next, all we need to do is we have to um, cut out the eyes. Um, we still need the ear pieces, so don't get rid of these because we have to cut out the purple 
part of it or gray whatever um, color you would like to call that so I'm actually going to roll my purple out real quick and it is not the best purple so luckily we don't need too much of it it's like kind of falling apart that's all right because I need it as thin as possible so I'm gonna I'm gonna do this and then I'm going to um, start assembling the eyes and I will come back to you as soon as possible okay so after a struggle with my white fondant and my blue fondant and purple fondant I finally am satisfied with the results my fondant has um, kind of been getting dried out so when I cut it out as you can see there's like little nicks and stuff but that's okay because we're gonna hide that in the next and final step so and actually what I did with um, with the blue part over oh, right here the blue part of the eyeballs um, I actually just used um, some uh, piping tips and I got the closest size that I could. Oh, don't mind my dirty, well, not dirty nails, but my nail polish. Um, so I actually got some piping tips that was close to the size, and I just kind of like rounded them out a little bit and then just kind of smooth them down. Like, as you see, you can just push down a little bit, make sure everything's sticking together quite nicely. And um, of course, I used a piping tip. I don't remember what tip. I just kind of held it over um, the template and sized it up and then put it down. So that's what we got so far. And now I'm going to show you the last and final step of this little cutie pie. Okay, so for my last and final step, I'm going to outline everything in black. So you're gonna take your black food color and put it on a plate. I don't know why I prefer my glass plates, the see-through plates when I do this step, I'm not sure. Just put a little dab and then I get these from the liquor store. This is New Amsterdam Vodka. It's five times distilled. It has a 40% alcohol volume. If you do not want to use an alcohol, I think they have extracts that have a high alcohol content. This is just so that your um, food coloring will dry and all the moisture is sucked out and everything and you're good to go. So I actually have a little dropper um, that I have from when my son was little and actually and this is like the cheap stuff because these are only a dollar at my liquor store there's like a jar this is the only thing I go in for and then I just put some on top and then just turn this up put it off to the side now this is a bigger brush of course I'm not going to use this but I'm going to use this to actually make sure it's all mixed in together and this is what I do when I paint, like when I paint all my cakes and stuff too. I make sure that there is a good ratio with the alcohol content. So I'm going to sit this off to the side because that's just my mixer. Now I don't know how well you could see this brush. This is a very teeny tiny brush. And basically I'm just going to dab it. Get off all the excess that I can. Now I'm going to pick Jigglypuff up and then I'm just going to very carefully, I get, I concentrate really hard on this part and I'm going to paint the mouth. I'm just going to follow my line. Now I don't know how this is actually going to work and come together because again this is a fondant and chocolate mix. But it seems to be okay. Okay. All right, I got my mouth. So I'm going to do this part. And when the whole thing is outlined in black, I'll show you the final project. Okay, guys and gals, check it out. My little jiggly puff is complete. Now, I did mess up a little bit around the right eye and on the ears a little bit. Um, the paint really does not, uh, it sticks in some spaces and in some spaces it kind of like um, bubbles up a little bit. I'm going to kind of show you um, what I mean. I don't know if you could tell right here. I had to go over this twice because, again, the oils in the... Uh, 
chocolate it doesn't really allow the food coloring and vodka to stick but if you go over it a couple times um it will eventually adhere and it will dry to the touch um so this probably took about even though this is only a 25 minute video it took about like an hour to make which isn't that bad maybe a little over an hour it's just really cutting everything and um you know and just trace cutting everything out of the fondant and all that but yeah I think she's a cutie pie. Now, like I said before, I do like this um, modeling chocolate and fondant combination. Um, I feel like it does when you're, if you're going to do cutouts, I think, or like even um, impressions, like if you use an impression mat, I think this is really good to use. Even just regular plain modeling chocolate. This was the original pink that I had that I mixed with the white uh, marshmallow fondant. Um, if you're going to cover a cake with it, I don't think that you would do that. But if you're going to use it for like flat pieces like this, I would recommend. If you're going to paint on them, again, you might have to do a couple coats over and over just for it to adhere. Um, maybe add some more alcohol to the, um, to the food coloring to see if that helps. Um, I wouldn't suggest. Um, covering the cake with it if you're going to paint on the cake or anything like that just use regular fondant um but yeah this was like a fun little experiment slash project because I think Jigglypuff came out really really cute and um yeah and I learned something new um I think though I am going to try I'll do the recipe on here I already did the chocolate fondant it tastes just like Tootsie Rolls I will try to make the white chocolate fondant and see how that works and maybe I'll cover a cake or something with it and see how it goes. Um, so yeah, so I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a like and subscribe to my channel. And again, thank you to everybody who has been watching my videos for the past couple months. Again, I'm still a newbie at this. I'm still trying to learn the camera and you know, I don't know all this stuff, but yeah. So again, thank you guys so, so much. Um, I can't wait till Halloween comes. I have so much fun stuff planned for Halloween. Um, so yeah, so remember, be kind because you don't know what kind of battle somebody's fighting. So be kind, peace, love, and happiness to everybody. Have a great day. And me and Jigglypuff, we're out. Peace out. Love you guys. Bye.